songs and felicitations. Okay, the first round. Boom. <laughs> and oh, geez, that was boom. just unnecessary. You kidding me? You can't be out of range. Greetings and felicitations, YouTube. You're all the happy and way here. We are at Scorpionites, a favorite little map of mine. And we are in a game of... Let's see, this is Argos versus Lycia. Dr. Appia style. We're here to analyze the Argos player's gameplay and see what went wrong. The player sent me this replay saying that he wasn't quite sure how was it that he lost. Thought he had this one in the bag, and his opponent did too. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at it and see what happened. So starting off with the build, we are looking at a pair of Night Runners, Nargiv Raider, two Argiv Swordmasters, two Armored Spearmen, Diomedes himself on foot, two Reinforced Chariots, and we have a Centaur Champion and a uh, Savage Centaur Warrior. This is a perfect build in the 4400 rule set. Um, no, no funds left unspent. <clears throat> Lycia, I actually really like this Lycian army. This is gnarly. So we have an Archer Skirmisher Hero in a Chariot. And the infantry line is a mix. It's, um... But, the, but, but oh man, there's symmetry to it. So the left flank. Um, well, actually, both of the flanks. Alright, yeah, yeah, yeah. Both flanks. Renowned Kopesh Fighter. Heavy Axe Warrior. Renowned Kopesh Fighter. On both sides. And then the center is Heavy Axe Warrior. Companions of Sarpedon. Heavy Axe Warrior. Now, it is worth remembering that the Companions of Sarpedon are a fear-causing unit. Um, heavy as well. As, as they have the... Everybody here has the Javelin. Even the Javelins throw Javelins. <laughs> Even the Giants throw Javelins. This is a hefty skirmishing army, but it has a lot of melee power in it, too. Um, so I actually really like this army a lot. Um, so, yeah, okay. So, What's going on here in these early stages is Lycia is playing the game exactly 100% perfectly here. It's he's, he's taking up his position. If this was a tournament, he'd he'd be forced to attack with somebody else, not just the hero. But he's taken up he's taken up a very defensive position and he's using his archer skirmisher hero to cause as many casualties as he can in the very expensive Arg of Sword Masters and probably also going to get some collateral kills in Armored Spearmen as well. And Argos is just kind of sitting back and taking it because he needs to get all of his forces together. He's got his uh, centaurs out here hidden. There's no point to keep them hidden at this point. When you're looking at this battlefield, there's no chance for them to, to get a, a flank out this direction. If you wanted to get behind him, you'd have to go all the way around this rock. And the only way you're going to get over here is to reveal your, your centaurs anyway. I, they, I feel like there's no point in keeping your units a secret over here anymore. Your opponent has made it quite clear that he is happy with his ground. So don't just stay there. I appreciate that he's coming down from his position. He's not just going to tank out there forever. But his hero's already at 27 kills. It's good that you got your chariots over here. I'd be pushing the uh, the archer skirmisher hero with the chariots. Just doing whatever I can to make that guy not want to just stand out in the open. Because um, in, in the meantime, he's just going to continue to rack up more and more and more kills. He's now up to 31. He's gotten some armored spearmen now. And your infantry is very squishy by comparison to all of this. This is this is a, a wall of man meat here, okay? This is this is not anything you want to see in battle. I I do not do not blame you. I honestly just looking at the builds, I don't see that you have a very good path to success. Um, all right, it looks like we're now advancing here, and I'm gonna pause this because I want you to kind of take a look at this. You have decided to move your centaurs. Um, you have these night, night runners, Argiv raiders out here. There are nine infantry units in front of you, as well as a pair of heavy Anatolian skirmishers and a pair of armored giant spearmen. You're attacking with two Argiv Swordmasters, two Armored Spearmen, and Diomedes against all of this. Yes, you're also attacking with Reinforced Chariots, but I also don't think that this is a good idea. In a scenario like this, the, the thing to do is to stay back, hopefully beyond the range of the Archer Skirmisher Hero, and envelop the enemy's position as best you can so that you have multiple angles of approach simultaneously all right you need to be able to pull that off at the same time that's why i was saying it was a bad idea just to keep your your centaurs over there they, they should have been over here for a while um since you've decided to pull the trigger here okay 
Let's see how it goes. And it looks like your idea here is let's just go with the heavy chariots into the renowned Kopesh fighters. You took about a third casualties on this one on the charge. They were braced. They were ready for it. They were holding their ground. You've gotten really good penetration on their line. They're they're definitely losing uh, decisively. Um, you're also engaged with this heavy axe warrior, and the heavy axe warrior is very happy to have this opportunity here. Um, so at this stage, the renowned Kopesh fighters, they've now all stood back up. Your chariots are still here. Um, you needed to get out of there. Uh, yeah, it does say they're still losing, but with the support of heavy heavy infantry right beside them and the fact that they all have javelins, uh, there isn't a good outcome here for your chariots. Um, you either fall back and you're going to get shot by javelins, or you stay there and you're going to get torn apart in melee. Um, I think the better plan would have been just at the beginning to try and take advantage of all this territory up here, wait until all of your infantry was engaged, and then rear attack with the chariots. Um, and also with the, with the centaurs. Um, but we're, we're in it now. As you can see here, look at this. Art of Swordmasters losing their battle. They're already more than half their health gone. Diomedes is losing his battle. He got singled out by giants. That's huge. I, I did like that you kept the shields in front of your, your heavy armored spearmen. There's literally javelins everywhere. So that was definitely the good call. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, see, so that reinforced chariot broke. You decide you have to fall back with your other reinforced chariot. The renowned Cuppish fighters have strength. You have an opportunity here to deal some damage to the archer skirmisher here. I'm glad you're taking it. You are going to eat some javelins for your trouble, though, but that's okay. I think that's the better payoff right now. And it looks like the renowned Kopesh fighters are actually going to chase. So now that they're no longer, you know, standing and braced, you could probably beat them up with your chariot some. You're going to lose this Arc of Swordmaster. Your centaurs have arrived. You're you're attacking with, with this blob altogether. You had a, a strange opportunity here. Um, when all five of those units arrived, they all went for this Heavy Axe Warrior right here. And as you can see, they were losing that engagement. Look how quickly, oh my goodness, look how quickly your Armored Spearman lost between the renowned Kopesh fighter and the Armored Giant Spearman. That's a big loss right there, too. But um, I think you had made the right choice in your initial attack to go after the Heavy Axe Warrior here on this flank. Um, this is only a 650 fund unit. You would have bought that uh, exchange with your Centaurs and the and the Light Infantry. They would have bust right through there. And then you would have had rear attack opportunity on this round, Kopesh Fighter. Rear attack opportunity on the Companion of Sarpedon, which you've also hit with Zeus's Wrath. That's a good target for that. And rear attack opportunity over here on this Heavy Axe Warrior. But I think you decided to fall back with everybody so you could try and bail out this Arg of Swordmaster. I think that Arg of Swordmaster is already done. Um, I don't think there's much you can do about that guy. <clears throat> so I'm going to let this play out some. Watch the charge here. It looks like actually the centaurs have orders to try and help bail out the chariots, I guess. Yeah, that does seem to be the case. Your opponent activated air I don't know why this heavy Anatolian skirmisher ended up all the way out there. And yet, yeah, all right, so because you had fled over here so soon, the odd armored spearman, which was already going to lose anyway, I suppose, definitely got down and out for the count. Your opponent is blobbing some here. This is good news for you. Too bad it's in the scrubs. If you had, you had a chariot over here, that'd be a very good opportunity to attack. It looks like you're going to put your centaurs in here. This is going to be great. Oh, no, wait. They're turning around. I guess they're going back for the Kopesh. Not a bad plan. Arc of Swordmasters here routing. Archer Skirmisher here killing some of his own units. This is a good charge for your, your chariot, so I like this. You're up to 50 kills now. You've almost earned your XP on them. Yeah, I think it's a good idea to clean up some of these uh, some of these units on the outlying ed edges, but let's just take inventory of what's in the mainline fight right here, right now, right? Like, there. See, do you do you see how heavily outnumbered you you've been? <laughs> yeah, but I think you got a little bit better on numbers over here, um, and it does look like the yeah all of the Lycian units are losing out here, but so are you. <laughs> there are no winners in this engagement over here. And then out on this side, the only the only people who seem to be faring well are going to be renowned Kopesh fighters, Diomedes sort of, and this heavy axe warrior. So I actually think you're in danger of losing Diomedes here. Um, I kind of want to see how this plays out. Everybody's getting even more blobbed in. This is actually an opportunity if you use 
use some of your units the right way. You activate Diomedes' Aristea. You've got your Night Runners coming out here. They're going to turn around and, and get back into the battle. Good targets to pick. These guys are close to breaking. You got your Arc of Swordmasters back. That's good news. Your Chariots are turning around to attack. And I love this part. Watch this. And all of your Arc of Swordmasters decided that that guy needed to die. <laughs> I don't know what that Chariot Driver did to them. But they all unanimously decided that that Argov Chariot did not deserve to live. That was one of the most brutal friendly fire attacks I have ever seen. <laughs> and now they're going to go on in here. And presumably they're here to, to, to save Diomedes. But I don't know after that Chariot attack. Maybe they're here to kill him. <laughs> I think they just flipped sides, man. I really... That was, I think, I think, the, I know why that happened. There was one, like, renowned Kopesh fighter um, model from this unit standing right in front of the, uh, of the chariot. And then they all just threw their javelins for that one guy, and there just happened to be a chariot in the way. Okay, so this is a big opportunity for you, and I, I, I think it's the right call. You do have an opportunity to kill this archer skirmisher here. You even, I think, this is crazy. You use your reinforced chariots to rear attack this uh, armor giant spearman. That's actually a really smart play because you wanted to keep those armor giant spearmen away from your cavalry while your cavalry tries to clean up this uh, archer skirmisher hero. It's a good call. You're also doing everything you can to boost your morale here. But what you need to do right now, and I, I see it as your plan, you need to kill this hero before his infantry beats yours. And your infantry has been fighting an uphill battle the entire time. Uphill, outnumbered, their exhaustion starting to settle in, and their morale is doing really well because of these, um, because of this rallying cry. But the thing is, is that Lycian infantry, especially the renowned Kovach fighters, they buff the morale of everybody around them. The companions of Sarpedon, they debuff your troops' morale. So the net result here is going to be against you in the long run. And sure enough, look at your morale start to plummet here. You've almost got the hero. You did break those armor giant spearmen. You've engaged that heavy Anatolian skirmisher before it could get here. But there's still a very fresh armor giant spearman out here. He um, shatters that reinforced chariot. And this is really important. You didn't kill the hero. I, I can't find him. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that he shattered and... Every once in a while, the game will have a unit shatter, and then it'll take the banner off the battlefield completely. Though it isn't necessarily accurate. So I'm just waiting to see if there's anybody who runs away from this. He might actually be dead. I could be wrong. Yeah, maybe he is dead. But I didn't get I didn't get the notification from Homer saying that your hero is fall or your enemy zero has fallen. Hades has claimed the enemy zero. That's the line. A anyway, big rear charge hit here. The Capadius of Sarpedon don't care. That was huge. Like, they just got rear charged by Centaur Champions and the morale. Little impact. Very little impact. Reinforced Chariots, they got broken over here by the Heavy Anatolian Skirmishers. Those Skirmishers turn around and start throwing javelins here. You do have some units regrouping, coming back into things. Um, your opponent is using the Giants to try and fend off the Centaur Champions. Those guys have broken now. You do have Argive Raiders and Armored Spearmen, Night Runners regrouped out here. But like, like it's just it's just too much against you at this stage, man. And, and it's crazy too, because I, I noticed the balance of power definitely swung against you. But your opponent, he can now take his time. He can start using heavy axe warriors to throw javelins at Savage Centaur Warriors. He can get his units out there. His stamina is now um, just as gone as yours is, but you do have some fresh legs in your Armored Spearmen. Arc of Raiders, I'm glad that you gave these Armored Spearmen a chance to recoup their stamina because they also recover health. They're not engaged in battle, so this is really, really good news for you. Still a minute and 20 seconds left. These Heavy Axe Warriors are doing really well despite the, the circumstances. And oh no, the Armor Giant Spearmen saw the Centaur Champions coming. They turned around, met the charge, and they're going to uh, they're gonna butcher these champions. Absolutely promise you that. The morale is dipping for both units though. Not so clear cut anymore, but there's just so little health left on the Savage Centaur Warriors. There they go, they break. The Centaur Champions though, they're about to break. Yep, there they go. 
No, they're wavering. They, yep, they just broke. Arc of Swordmasters are back. They're not throwing javelins at you anymore. And finally, this heavy Antonian skirmisher comes back and is now free to start throwing its javelins out here. And that shatters an Arc of Swordmaster. Armored Spearmen are here to fight the Armored Giant Spearmen. That's your best bet, for sure. Night Runners are trying to get out here to stop those heavy Antonian skirmishers. I don't think they're going to get the chance. Diomedes is running. Armored Spearmen are beaten. All that's left really are your Night Runners. And this Armored Giant Spearman here... I'm sorry, this Armored Spearman that is going to break this Armored Giant Spearman. But that's going to be army losses kicking in. And that is going to be it. Why did you lose? Because you fought this battle the way Lycia wanted you to fight that battle. You didn't have all of your units there at the same time to engage his fortified position. And you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with a stronger infantry line. That outnumbered you. And was uphill. That's why you lost. Um, <clears throat> the other thing was is a little bit of uh, misfortune in that you didn't kill the enemy hero. You need to kill the enemy hero in order to get that uh, get the credit for the um, for the morale. But I don't think that that was as consequential as the the other parts. I mean, maybe he did die. Maybe maybe Homer just was taking his tea break or something. He didn't announce uh, that Hades had claimed him. You did manage triple digits on uh, on a Night Runner. That's really good job. That's a very good job. 110 for this Spearman. 141 for this uh, Swordmaster. Uh, um, I hope they're the ones that killed that that friendly chariot because they needed to earn back something. Um, but yeah, you know, you were just heavily outnumbered. I I really like this Lycian build. This is a very simple, very straightforward build. I maybe not, I probably wouldn't have brought heavy Anatolian skirmishers, and I might have done something differently with all of the spent XP, but this was still a really solid army. Very sturdy. Um, a very impressive build, and my hat's, my hat's off to you, Alanakos of Lycia. All right, anyway, that's it for today's Dr. Appius. I, I hope you all find that informative, and I've got a couple more I'm going to try to record real quick. Ta-ta. Right. I love you all. See you guys in the next video.